I'm continuing this uh, solution here. So I've I ran into the time limit on uh, of 10 minutes. So now I've got part B. We're working on part B here. Part A is on a separate video, and I've quoted the results, some of the results from part A here. Uh, so once again, we've got the the baseball pitching machine. It it launches the ball with an initial horizontal velocity of v zero, and that ball comes in, it drops some due to gravity while it's traveling, and it comes in at a height here of between 788 and 1,068 millimeters. Um, and so what we know is, what we figured in part A is that if the height is 788 millimeters, then this is the time it takes 0 0.3810 seconds, and if the height is 1,068 millimeters, here is the time, 0 0.2968 seconds. Now, what we're trying to solve in part B is to find the angle alpha here at which the ball arrives. Now, how do we do this? Well, we've got um, velocity in the x direction which we can calculate from th from these times and we've got a velocity in the y direction and I should say that this is at the batter at, at this point here we're looking at those velocities when the ball arrives and so there's a, a, a resultant vector like this we'll call it just the velocity vector which is the vector sum of the x and the the velocity in the x and the velocity in the y directions. And so all we need to know is this angle here. And so how do we calculate that? Well, we can get that from using uh, trigonometry. And the tangent of that angle, of the angle alpha, will be equal to minus vy divided by vx. So that's all we have to calculate. Um, the vx is very simple. We know that, that it's at a constant velocity. It's launched at a constant velocity. We know the distance it traveled. It's right here, 12.2 meters. And we know the time it takes. So velocity in the x direction in this case is just going to be 12.2 meters divided by that 0 0.3810 seconds and down here in the second case it'll also be 12.2 meters but now divided by this shorter time 2.968 seconds And those, well, that we actually did calculate this previously. This works out to be 32 meters per second. And this one, 41.1 meters per second. So those are the x components of the velocity. Now all we need to do is calculate the y components. In, in those two situations. And so what is the velocity in the y direction? Well, it starts off with a, a zero velocity. Um, and so we'll, we'll write it like this. The y component of the velocity is the initial y velocity plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction times the time squared. Now this one's going to be equal to zero. This a sub y is gravity and the t we've got up here so those two t values there so we can calculate the two v sub y's so in one case it's well, these are both going to be negative because the the g is in the negative direction um, 9.8 meters per second squared times the time so i'll put this one as 0 0.3810 squared and so in one case well I'm going to have to calculate that out 
and then the second case we've got here 9.8 meters per second squared and here we've got 968 seconds squared so let me calculate the and there they are I've got to uh, calculate this the first one is 3.73 meters per second one the second one is 2.91 meters per second and so now we can go and calculate those angles so in one case the tangent of alpha is going to be three point seven three meters per second divided by thirty two point zero two in the second case the tangent of that angle is 2.91 divided by 41.11 and so we can calculate well, let me see I'll just write the alpha in the first case is 6.66 .66 degrees and in the second case, 4.05 degrees. So there we go, that's the solution to part B of this problem.